When I walked away from Christ when I was 18 years old, I told you the, the, the story before. The pastor of the church that I attended had a, a, an affair with his secretary. He's 25 years old. I come in one day, there's an old guy teaching up there. He's like 45 years old. It's all perspective when you're 18 years old. And I said, where's Pastor Bob? And they said, well, he had an affair with the secretary. And I called a buddy of mine up who had been a mentor of mine. And I was told that he left me. His wife answered, he left me and, and, and had an affair. And I said, if this is what Christianity is about, I'm out of here. But there was something else going on inside of me. It wasn't just, and that was, that was hard to hear. Those were two hard things. I saw firsthand the devastation of a church when there is a scandal within that church. And it's a hard thing. But there was also something in me. I, if I had things right between me and the Lord at that time, those things may have challenged me, but I would have come out the other side okay. But I walked away from the Lord for a year using that as an excuse. What was going on inside of me truly, really? I was 18 years old. I'd been a Christian from the time that I was 14 years old. And now I'm an adult. I'm not quite sure that I was an adult or going to act like an adult, but I looked out in the world and I thought the world has something to offer me. That's really what was going on. It was a moral issue. It wasn't the fall of the pastor that caused it. It was me going, I, I want to see what's out there in the world. And for a year, I walked away from the Lord and I walked completely away from Christ. I did walk away from him. So much so that when I came back a year later, and that's where the Chuck Gerard song comes in. Because at the time, my father had died when I was like 13 years old. And uh, he worked at base and he had gotten some money. I'm not sure if it was insurance money or exactly what it was when he died. But I got that when I was 18 years old. And so I had a 68 Camaro. I had a brand new Jeep that I'd bought. I had an RD350 Yamaha, a little two-stroke, if you guys are aware of those. It was fast. And, uh, and um, then I lost my license. Now I walk away from the Lord. I've got those three things. I have the Jeep. I'm four-wheeling at Elephant Butte. I run into a barbed wire fence. I put a uh, four-barrel carburetor on it, but I didn't use four-wheel drive floats, if any of you guys know. And it, it covered the engine and gas. It caught on fire and burned up. And I didn't have insurance on it. So I still had to pay for it. I ended up, I ended up paying, having to pay uh, the payments on it until it was paid off. Then, and, and I never got it fixed. My 68 Camaro was very fast. It had a 327 motor, Muncie M22 tranny, 308 rear end, and it would get up and go. And so did my driver's license. I got so many tickets. There was a guy, a police officer, who used to wait down the street for me. You, th you think I'd be smart enough to go. That guy's there all the time. I'm gonna go slow until I get past him. But, um, and, and I went to, um, I got caught driving without my license. I lost my driver's license. I got caught driving without my license. And I went before the judge and um, the judge looked at my record. Literally he did this. And then he says to me, you know what, I'm giving you seven days in, in jail. And I said, I work. And he goes, work release. So I had seven days in jail. And sometime I'll tell you some of the funny stories that happened and there were two crazy things that happened, happened in there. Um, but um, after that, my girlfriend broke up with me and my motorcycle got stolen. I put on my helmet, my gloves. I'm living in Albuquerque, it's cold. And I walk out and there's, the bike isn't there. I'm just like, so now I didn't have a driver's license. I didn't have my Jeep. I didn't have my car. and I didn't have a girlfriend. And at the time I had wrapped up my identity in having a girlfriend. It's not a good thing to do, by the way. Our identity needs to be in Christ. But I'd wrapped up my identity in having a girlfriend. I felt like I was someone because I had a girlfriend. So she said to me, drive home, go, go home because I don't want to see you anymore. So she broke up with me, didn't want me there. So I took her car and drove it home. While I'm driving home now, this is a year later after walking away from the Lord. What did the world have to offer me? And you know what I love about this is the Bible says God will leave the 99 and go after the one. God went after me. Now he went after me by taking everything away from me. So I realized there was nothing in the world for me. And I'm driving home that night. And I turn it over. I'm just driving. I'm, you know, I'm devastated. And I turn it over to K-Light, which is the Christian radio station there. And love song, Chuck Gerard's song, Little Pilgrim was playing. 
It says, little pilgrim going down the road of life. Can't you see that there are so many who are just like you? And they take a little turn to the left to see what that road has to offer. But you got to make it back to the main road anyhow. And you've got all that lost time to make up for. And it's a sad thing when you realize you're all alone again. And it hit me. I'm driving down the road, just thinking God won't have anything to do with me. And then the last line of the song says, and it's a glad thing when you find your way back home. I took that as God saying, I want you to come home. I went that night and I prayed, Lord, not what I want anymore, but whatever you want. And, I, and God did a transformation in my life. He, he brought me back. And I thought he was going to bring me back as a second class Christian. In fact, I went to an Assembly of God church. <clears throat> that was the church I was going to when I left. I went to Assembly of God church. The worship was great. The teaching was great. But nothing happened inside of here. I, here I am in church. I feel nothing. And I think I, I, I've gone too far. I went to another church, the same thing. I thought I'd gone too far. So a friend of mine, my backslidden buddy, calls me up and says, you got to go to church with me on Friday night. And we went to this wild, charismatic church that he'd gotten saved in. He had no idea that I knew what I was talking about. I think I tried to witness to him during that year, but I was drunk. And it's a bad thing to try to witness to people when you're drunk. That generally doesn't work. And he said, you got to go to church. I got saved. You got to go to church with me. I went to church that night. It was a bizarre church. They played the Jaws theme over and over again and sang in the spirit with the Jaws theme. Dun, 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 in the spirit, in the spirit. The whole place is chanting that. And I'm sitting there and I just hear, I really believe God spoke to me. I heard God say, come home, son. It's time for you to come home. And you've heard of laughing in the spirit. The charismatic church might have had that. I was crying in the spirit and I ugly cry. I don't, I ugly cry. And other people are looking at me like, I don't know what exactly is going on here. But God brought me back completely to him. Completely at that time. 